Have I been too harsh with Benchmade? How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Chambeau, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And if you think that I've been too harsh on the USA company known as Benchmade, the people fangirl out over, now's your opportunity. Go down to the comments section. Let me know. It's your time to disagree. Go ahead and do it. And while you're down there, if you like an open form of discussion about knife opinion, make sure you give the like button a friendly high five. Now, I've already reviewed the Benchmade shootout. And if you're interested in watching just a regular review, go ahead, click the link in the corner. But if you crave context, if you want to know in depth why my opinion is why my opinion is, we're going to do an episode of Grail or Garbage, the series where I systematically and categorically rank and review knives to give you that context so that you know whether or not I feel like you should really put this in your pocket. Should you put it in your display case? And yes, some people would put this in their display case. Some people put $50 knives in their display case. Everyone's different. But here's how grail or garbage works. We've got five categories. Those categories are materials, ergonomics, fidget factor, the lock, and fit and finish. Each of those categories is worth a max of 10 points. And at the end of ranking each category, we will add up the total and put it on our leaderboard, which currently is looking like this. By the time we're done, you'll finally know, is the Benchmade shootout a grail or is it garbage? All right, guys, before we get going, I do want to mention for those who might not know, but everything that we rank today is going to be based heavily on two things. Those two things are going to be cost and availability. For example, a knife could be made out of super premium materials like S35VN and titanium, but if it costs more than it should, that's going to negatively affect the score. Something else is availability. For example, custom knives. A custom knife that is rare and hard to find might score better because of that lack of availability, meaning that people still want it even with the materials that you might consider to be inferior. A lot of custom makers make knives out of 154 CM, for example. And so at the end of the day, a custom knife is going to score better than a production knife at a higher price point because it is harder to get your hands on. With all that in mind, let's hop into materials. For materials, we're looking at CF Elite Handle Skills, which is basically Benchmade's FRN handle skills. Uh, FRN, if you don't know what that means, is fiber reinforced nylon. And that's not a bad handle scale material by any stretch, uh, but it's also not necessarily as durable or resistant as something like G10. And if you don't believe me, feel free to look it up on your own. However, while these handle skills are definitely meant to be used and abused, and FRN is a fine handle scale material, not necessarily as good as G10 is not what I expect at a $300 price point. Let's talk about the blade. The blade on here is CPM Crewware, which is a excellent powder metallurgy tool steel. It's very, very resistant and it's a very good user steel. And so I actually really like the use of CPM crew wear on something like a OTF that's meant to be used and abused because that means that they were thinking about the end user. M390 is great until you have to go to sharpen it and CPM crew wear is just going to be better for a user steel that is going to be resharpened and reused over and over. Benchmade also advertises that these are heat treated somewhere in the realm of 63 to 65 HRC, which is pretty good and right in line with what I would expect for this steel type. However, at the $300 price point, that is definitely pushing it. And I know there are other OTFs that are American made that are made with a more premium handle skill material for a lesser price. If you don't believe me, feel free to look up Axial OTFs. Um, the Axial Shift is made out of better materials at a lower price point. And for those reasons, this is going to be getting a six out of 10 for materials. 
Next is ergonomics, and ergonomics is all about how the knife feels in your hand. Are there any hot spots? Is it a natural feel? Is it something that you can switch your grips up on so that when you need to use the knife in different situations, you have that bit of flexibility? Uh, does the handle scales feel good in the hand? Are they grippy? So on and so forth. And first, we got to talk about the pocket clip because if you didn't know, pocket clips definitely affect ergonomics. Now, this is actually a very, very good stamped pocket clip. Benchmade did it right. It reminds me kind of a, like a Lynch Northwest clip that you might put on a Spyderco. But with Spyderco, you have to pay extra for it. With Benchmade, it's already there. So that's actually a very good thing. Next, let's talk about these handle skills. So the handle skills... Uh, being this textured pattern right here are actually really grippy and not in an uncomfortable manner. Uh, that's actually really good. And the flex on these CF Elite handle seals, while it doesn't feel premium, it does actually allow you to get a better grip. And so those are definitely the positives. Now let's talk about some of the things that are not so positive. You'll notice because it's hard to forget, you have Mount Everest for a button. And here's why that's a problem. While it does lend to easy deployment and, and detraction or retraction rather, it also means that you're limited for how far up your thumb can be on that handle scale. Your thumb is a controlling and guiding factor when you hold on to a knife and when you grip a knife. And sometimes you might actually need that extra bit of control. In this case, you're limited because no one's going to be using their thumb right there. And if you do move it over to get put some pressure behind the spine of the blade, you're always reminded that that fat button is there. Now, maybe that's something that you want. However, it doesn't necessarily feel comfortable. Well, how about in an ice pick slash reverse grip? Uh, if you don't use your thumb as a backstop to get more control, uh, it's fine. Uh, this is absolutely fine. The moment your thumb gets involved, it's going to be constantly reminded of the existence of that glass breaker, which, and I'm sorry to say this, 99.9999999% of the time, you're not actually going to need that glass breaker. Am I saying that it's useless? No, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, especially in a cir circumstance where you do need a glass breaker. But think about the last time you actually used one of those and then remember that you're probably not going to need that on a daily basis at all. Uh, as far as draw cuts or pull cuts, whatever you want to call this, I know you're not supposed to cut towards yourself, but believe it or not, that is actually something people do uh, when using knives in a certain manner. Uh, it's going to be fine as long as we don't have to put our thumb back there or up there. The grip is actually going to be decent. And so at the end of the day, there is some good, there is some bad, and for all of those reasons, ergonomics is going to be getting a 7 out of 10. All right, so we got to talk about the fidget factor, and fidget factor is all about how easy is it to manipulate? How smooth feeling is it? Is it something that's easy? Uh, do you like to play with it? You know, the more you like to play with a knife, the more likely it is, is that it's well designed. And maybe not because of it, but or in spite of it, it just is what it is. So let's talk about that for a second. While I did dog on the deployment button in the ergonomics category, I'm about to give it a little bit of shine. This button makes this knife very easy to deploy and retract without too much effort because of that big steep ramp. It's telling you exactly where to put your thumb to deploy it. I'm a huge fan of Microtex, but Microtex are notorious for being hard to deploy. I've seen full grown men with plenty of strength in their hands fail a Microtech because they were just pushing on it in the wrong area. This deployment button actually makes that impossible because it is a ramp. You can only push it forward. You cannot push it down. And so that actually makes it very easy. The springs are not also what I would consider to be super tough or super resistant. And so it's going to make it very easy to deploy and retract. Uh, the action on it is nothing to, to write home about per se, but it's definitely quick enough and snappy enough to be able to deploy and retract very quickly. And that's actually kind of addicting. The balance on the knife is very good and it's right where you'd put your index finger consequently because of the shape of that deployment button. And so it makes it really easy to manipulate in the hand. If you need to switch up grips, that's not going to be an issue. You'll be able to do that one handed and it's very lightweight. All of these things make it feel really good as far as fidget factor is concerned. And for those reasons, it's going to be getting an eight out of 10 for fidget factor. So it's time we talk about a really contentious category for out the front knives, and that is the lock. And 
before we go down this path, I want you to know that about 99% of OTFs are going to have some blade play in the lock. It doesn't mean that the lock's not reliable um, or that it won't stand up to some abuse. It just means that you're going to experience some blade play. How much? It just kind of depends. Some have a little, some have a lot. Unless you're rocking a Grant and Gavin Hawk deadlock, you're going to have some. There's also an OTF made by SOG, which is not that good, which also has pretty good lockup. With that being said, the blade play on this one is terrible. Um, and I say terrible because I am used to Microtex, which have blade play, but it's a minimal amount and it's a lot less than this. If you want to see what that is like, feel free to watch the first video I did where I actually compared the two. I'll link it up there. Uh, with that being said, the lock on here is not going to fail you if you go to jam this in something. There's plenty of durability tests online that show that like many OTFs, this is actually very well made and will withstand quite a a bit of beating. That's something that is very commendable in my book. The thing that does kill it for me is this amount of blade play because it's not stable and it's more blade play than I would accept in an OTF. And you know, if you're going to accept some, don't accept too much. And in this case, I think that that's something that really needs to be addressed. And if we look up here at the top, it's because of the amount of space between the blade and those scales. That is the amount of blade play that you get, and they could have made those tolerances a little bit better. For me, it's not something that I am very impressed with, and that's why the lock will be getting a 6 out of 10. Okay, so it's time that we talk about fit and finish. This is our fifth and final category, which has to do with design language as well as manufacturing. Now, for the design language, I, you can really tell that Benchmade was trying to address a couple different customer pain points. Hit me up in the comment section and pause the video if you think you know what those are. The first customer pain point that they are addressing is the use of standardized screws. You'll notice that these are Torx head and a lot of manufacturers of OTFs tend to use proprietary. So the fact that you can actually take this apart is pretty cool. I wouldn't suggest it for most people because unless you have experience taking apart an OTF and reassembling one, I just wouldn't necessarily suggest it. Uh, the other one, the other pain point that they're addressing is the ease of deployment and retraction. And they do a good job of addressing that with this button shape. This firing button is actually really, really easy because it shows you exactly where to put your finger and it's impossible to press down, which a lot of people tend to do, which is in my opinion, why they struggle with deployment. In this case, it's quite obviously a push forward. The tension on the springs isn't super tight either, and that also helps with ease of deployment. The other thing that I'm a big fan of is the fact that this blade is not super beefy. Uh, it is thin behind the edge, which makes it very slicey. And given that it's CPM crew wear, which I think is a great choice for a user steel, it's going to be easy to sharpen and also very tough in a user environment, that's very important. Now let's talk about the manufacturing quality. Benchmade is up there with just about any other American manufacturer. Could it be better? Yeah. It could also be a heck of a lot worse. And in this case, I think that they did a pretty solid job. Benchmade is known for pleasing customers. That's why they have a cult following, which loves to hate on me when I hate on Benchmades. And so there it is. They earned that following because they do make knives that are recommendable. The question is, who are they recommendable to? For fit and finish, I think that it's pretty decent. It's not amazing in my opinion. I'm not blown away by it, but I do think that it's better than average. And for those reasons, it's going to be getting a seven out of 10 for fit and finish. All right, now finally, it's time that we add up all of our scores and put it on our leaderboard. So here we go. For materials, it got a six. For ergonomics, a seven. For fidget factor, it got an eight. For the lock, it was a six. And for fit and finish was a seven. When you add up all of those, it comes out to a grand total of 34. 34 is just outside of our high recommend range. And here's the thing. Could I recommend this to people? Yes. This is actually in what I would consider to be the low recommend range. Uh, who could I recommend this to? If you have to have a bench made and it has to be an OTF, this is a great option. It's not a double edged dagger style blade that you'll never end up finding a utility for. This is actually a very usable knife. 
Uh, Benchmade does a great job by giving us CPM crew wear and ultimately a knife that you could really put to work. Am I happy about things like the blade play? No. But if you're okay with that blade play and you're okay with the ergonomics and you're okay with the $300 price point, yeah, I could recommend this to you and that's why it's a low recommend. Now, I do love to have discussions with people about this scoring system. Do you agree with the score? Do you disagree? Did you even watch this far? Which by the way, if you did, consider subscribing. We do these all the time. Either way, I want to hear from you. Guys, if you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, boohoo, there's a button for you too. And if you want to see more knife rankings just like this, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm Roll Shambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.